Hi friends, it's Sarah from Ruffles and Rain Boots, and I'm going to create a beehive sitting pothead gnome today. This guy has been duplicated by many, but the original design is getting an upgrade. If you'd like to make it, just boop, stick around. As always, please give this video a like so that I know you're here. This is who we're making today. Look how cute he is. And I wanna show you this up close in video so that you know my method for getting hot glue off works. All right, we're gonna start with a clay pot and the sock, that's the base and the body. You can use a larger pot, a smaller pot, just adjust the size of the sock to fit it, okay? So again, like I said, we're gonna use the pot. I'm gonna cover it. This is macrame cord. You could do a cool black and yellow stripe, that'd be fun. I'll put the link to the macrame cord I got on Amazon on the bottom, but I'm using a smaller Dollar Tree pot and a kid's crew sock. I just spilled that every time. All right, we're going to be using poly pellets for weight, polyfill for stuffing. I'm going to be using faux fur. This is a scrap of Mongolian and white, a wood bead or a wood round. I lose that in just a second. And then I'm gonna be using these Dollar Tree bees. They're super cute little stickers. You need an X-Acto knife, some scissors, and a hot glue gun. This is a detailed tip, sure, Bonder glue gun. I get asked this all the time. I love this glue gun. It's not dual temperature, it's hot. So we're going to do, this is the most tedious process. Uh, I'm not gonna lie. This is the majority of the time is taken up by doing this. This entire gnome was done for me in under 35 minutes. So it's not like a huge amount of time, but this part is kind of tedious. So pop on your favorite audio book or, you know, I asked in my newsletter, if you craft with the TV on, because that actually amazes me. If you can craft with the TV on and not lose a digit, I am amazed. I have to focus. All right, so speaking of my newsletter, I will put that link to sign up below. I will tell you that I had a bit of a newsletter glitch and the people are working on it. I basically unsubscribed about 14,000 people. Whoops. So if you want to sign up again, I'm going to put that right as the first link in the comment and I'll put it in the description box below. Okay. So when you get to the top, you're going to go into, just like the pot is shaped, you're going to go into the in little inset there and then just make it flat all the way around. Isn't that cool? It looks so seamless because you've stacked that rope on top of each other. Now, for those of you who are wondering, what about the hot glue that shows through? First of all, if you push the rope down onto the previous row, there's a lot less hot glue gunky than you think, but I'm gonna show you how I fix it. All right, we're gonna cut this off to about a quarter of an inch. Then I'm gonna put a little tiny bit of hot glue in that little hole and shove the edge right down into it so it disappears with the glue gun so I don't burn myself. There you go. There's some hot glue we're gonna take, see right there? We're gonna take a hot, or what do you call it? A heat gun, and we're just gonna on low, go all the way around, all the way around, and anything comes up. Now I had one big glob of hot glue, I'll show it to you, I'm not gonna lie to you. Uh, and I put a B over it. All right, so I just took a piece of cardboard this time, I traced the bottom of the opening of that pot onto cardboard, I, in my original video, I used a wood ornament from, you know, Christmas. Uh, you can use anything in the bottom because it's just basically helping with stability. But once you have that in the bottom, the thing is standing up straight. Just add weight to the bottom, whatever that weight looks like for you. These are poly pellets. And then you're going to tamp them down. You can see mine is about a third of the way up that sock. But because this is a Dollar Tree sock, I'm going to take thin pieces of polyfill and outline the weight. And the reason I'm doing that is because, well, you can see the bumpies and it drives me crazy. If you would like, you can create a very simple rectangle. I have shown a hundred times on this channel out of fabric and you can plop this little sock right into that rectangle, tie it off and no one will be the wiser. Or you can use a fancy sock. <laughs> fancy sock, that's like an oxymoron. Okay. Once I have it, I have a few inches here left at the top, which I'm going to split, pull apart, and tie into a double knot. This is going to help the pot stay in place with some structure, all right? I always drop my bodies to make sure they always land straight up, and now we're going to move on. 
I decided that this little skep needed a beehive opening. And if you have been around Ruffles and Rain Boots, the website for a hot minute, you know I have an extremely viral piece where I created a bee skep out of dollar store flower pots. And this is how I did it. We're just doing it on a smaller scale. So we're adding a bit of an oval here to the front in hot glue. And then we're using the same color of cord or jute or rope to create an opening. Isn't that fine? Don't cut that off yet though, because we'll actually use that to cover up the edge in just a second. So once you have that outline, we're gonna take a piece of the black and squish it down as flat as you can get it. Now you're going to create an oval. Now you're just gonna go around all the way around. You don't have to do math. This isn't a Fibonacci sequence or anything. Ooh, if you know what that is, Fibonacci golden triangle, let me know down in the, in the uh, comments. If not, Google it. It's so cool. All right. So now I'm just going to keep going, keep going all the way around, pushing and spreading out that hot glue, just going all the way around. I'm going to speed it up. Uh, for those of you asking, 35 minutes it took me to make this. So to give you an idea of how much time, I'm just gonna cut that off and I don't even need to add any glue. There's just a tiny bit of glue on my glue gun. I'm gonna press that down. I just realized we're not done. So I started to do the heat gun and realized we have to do the second row. Look at that. We're gonna be hiding the edge of the black using that second row. Now, if you've ever seen my viral flower pods from the Dollar Tree, you know that we can go many layers high for this to make it look really dimensional. So you don't have to stick with two layers like I'm doing here, three, four, whatever you'd like. All right, cut that off, do the same thing to hide that edge. Now it's time to hit the entire thing with the heat gun and we're gonna hide all those nasty little dollops of hot glue. Look at that. We set that aside to dry, try not to touch it, okay? Now, I have a ton of scraps of faux fur because I use them a lot. I'm gonna create about a one to one and a half inch rectangle. Now, it doesn't go all the way around, but I'm gonna use a little piece of scrap to fill that. So I'm gonna brush it out, find the center, and we're gonna glue this to the inside of our flower pot. Easy peasy, right? Here's the thing, I always tell you don't glue anything directly to the uh, fur and the reason, the front of the fur. The reason is because it is not a secure hold, it will shift and move. So what I'm gonna tell you is, if you still have fingerprints, add a generous portion of hot glue and press this in. It will seep to that fur fabric backing and it will be very, very secure. See, it didn't go all the way around, watch this. I'm gonna take a little tiny piece of cast off. <laughs> it's a triangle, it doesn't matter, no one will tell. I'm gonna glue it in right there. But you can see I'm using an enormous amount of hot glue in here. And again, you can use a face mask a spatula if you like your fingers. So these little Dollar Tree bees have a sticker, rip that off and then glue them on wherever you would like. I had a glue part that didn't come off with my heat gun, so I popped one right there in its place. All right, so once I have my hat onto my sock, I'm going to push it down really far, move the fur out of the way, turn it upside down, and glue it all the way around, right? It's sitting on top of that double knot, so it's very secure, just making sure there's glue getting onto that flower pot. This is optional. If you'd like to make a sitting gnome, you can use these Dollar Tree booties or any of my small one and a half to two inch uh, gnome boots or shoes in the pattern, but it's super easy to make these. First, I'm going to pop on a wood round because I lost the wood bead somehow in this process. So to make these here, I'm going to show you my mess ups. I don't hide these things from you. So here I realize that's not enough fabric to cover on the side. I'm going to rip it off. Boop. <laughs> and then I'm just going to make sure I have about an inch and a half on all sides here. You can see rip off that extra glue. So I'm gonna see here, I'm gonna pop it down so that I have enough to pull it up on all sides. So I'm gonna put down the front first, then the back. And now I'm gonna cut off that extra stuff on the side with that glue, because we don't need that much fabric. And I'm going to pinch and pleat the center. I do wait till that dries. And then I'm just gonna start tucking all the extra fabric in, adding a little glue, tuck it in, tuck it in, tuck it in. And uh, you can be done with that. Or you can be extra like me, which I'm gonna show you in just a second, but you can actually just split the fur and pop those right onto the body. 
So I'm showing you here, you don't even need a square or rectangle piece of fabric. You can just use whatever you have on hand. For those of you asking, this is a knit fabric. This is not felt. Felt will crease if it's of any quality. So I decided to use a knit. Now, again, I told you about being extra. We're going to take that exact same uh, macrame in black, macrame cord in black, I'm sorry. Start in the center and go in an oval. Um, you don't have to do this, okay? Don't. You don't, you don't have to be extra, okay? I, I wanted to be extra. Also, I didn't really have a project with the black cord. Um, I love macrame. It's very fun. I'm using it to make, you know, we're making friendship bracelets. We're making wall hangings. We're making projects that shouldn't be made with macrame cord. I'll, I may show that on this channel. I'm not sure yet. Over on ruffles.com, I have so many things I've never shown you on this channel. Uh, just because this is mostly you all like the gnomes, so I only show those. All right, so as you can see, I just keep moving, keep moving, going around in an oval to cover up the entire base of this shoe. That I just pulled out a little hot glue extra between my fingers and cut it off because it was a bit of hot glue I needed to hide. All right, so now I'm just going to cut off this edge and do the same exact thing we did on the skep, which was just use the tip of my glue gun. You really don't even need any glue. You can just melt what's near it. I hit it with a heat gun to hide all of that and melt all of that glue. And then I do the same thing for the second shoe. There you go, do the same thing. And now it's really fun, now it's time to assemble. I just split the fur on the two sides of the nose and just pushed, you know, pushed it front and pushed it back and then I added a generous portion of hot glue for the opening part that's full of fabric. I popped that on, did the other side and once those were dry, I glued on the very top to the body a little higher, so right up there, just to make sure they were 100% secure. Then I added some extra bees, including this one in the back over a glob I couldn't hide, and he's all done. So you can see there's no editing here. Look how little hot glue you can see on this project. Anyway, I'm glad you joined me. Please let me know in the comments what you think of it. Like, share, and subscribe for more crafty fun.